beautiful. As we all know, despite being probably the most dangerous thing in the entire game, Polly also has its uses, such as escaping holy mountains without triggering the collapse, as well as the recently discovered perk duping trick, which is performed at the perk removal nullifying altar deep below the ground to the right of the pyramid. A relatively little known fact is that it also exists in New Game Plus worlds, right here near the bottom of the lake. Now, I've already made a video talking about the perk removal altar itself, and I guess I'll link that right here or down below in the video description. But today's video is going to talk about the perk duping mechanic itself. And yes, I did say mechanic. It was originally a glitch discovered by a community member named Twist, and that if you triggered the nullifying altar while polymorphed, it would effectively duplicate your perks easily and without any opposition. In this most recent round of game patches, it was actually rebalanced in a way and made slightly more difficult to pull off. Basically, what you're gonna need is a pouch of silver, some whiskey, some blood, and polymorphine. It could be any type of poly, but I prefer normal poly for reasons we'll get into shortly. Anyway, what we want to do is fill the rightmost hollow with silver, the center hollow with whiskey, and then I'm going to carefully line it up so that when I throw a flask of blood straight up into the air, it lands directly into the center of that left hollow. And while it's in the air, I'm going to take a sip of poly. <laughs> Unfortunately now, Steve or Scott will spawn, and they spawn very angry and will instantly kill you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How to avoid dying when attempting to pull off this infinitely powerful trick. As you can see, you can definitely use Ambrosia. However, keep in mind that if you have Scott here, he's just going to destroy the ground, and this will not work. This is hair raising with even just Steve here because of the explosiveness of his attacks, causing the ambrosia to basically dissipate. But you gotta use what you have. And I wanna show you every method you can possibly use to achieve this. So moving on, the second method is to simply use destruction inside of a hollow egg, a very effective anti-poly method. Because as soon as you poly, that egg is broken, releasing destruction and instantly killing any enemy on screen, including Steve or Scott. Just make absolutely certain that you use normal poly for this and not chaotic or unstable. Because the destruction spell works by destroying every hostile enemy on the screen. If you poly into a hostile enemy, what do you think happens? <laughs> Anyway, after meticulously testing everything, community member Nobi created this image right here, which goes into great detail about the entire area. One of the very important things that this tells us is that we can actually poly outside of that purple box. So in this case, I'm going to stand up here and use the blood cloud spell on a trigger and then levitate up a little bit higher and poly. In this case, I'm using unstable poly because we're in the sand cave surrounded by Hisi. So this is probably the safest. And now the nullifying altar triggers, but no Steve or Scott spawned. So that is method number three. Just avoid triggering their spawn altogether. And now for the obvious, if you were to find the Peace with the Gods perk, you can use that because when you poly, even though Steve and Scott spawn completely berserked, they will be friendly. Importantly, listen, as long as you use normal poly. If you were to use chaotic poly or unstable poly, you will be destroyed immediately. Yes, you have a very small chance with chaotic poly of polying into a sheep or a fish, and you will be safe in those cases, but most likely not. Whichever method you prefer, you can repeat this as many times as you want because the nullifying altar also exists in parallel worlds. So if you were to make a parallel world travel wand such as this, you can quickly duplicate all of your perks, including perks that are not meant at all to stack more than a few times. This includes perks like the personal energy shield, close call, and hungry ghost. Just remember to scoop up all your silver into your pouch before traveling to a parallel world. On that note, if the gods are enraged and Scott spawns, be very careful because he can and will destroy all of your silver pretty quickly. Eventually, after repeating it a bunch, you could end up looking like this, which is pretty amazing. Remember that every time you repeat this, it doubles your perks. So if you go in with four hungry ghosts, you're going to come out with eight 
and then 16, and then 32, and then 64, and then 128, which is what I stopped at for Hungry Ghost, and I think Shield also, but these other perks I stopped a lot sooner. However, let's go down to Close Call. 75 Close Calls. Now, check this out. Whoops. Boom. He actually died before I hit him. <laughs> or whatever. It was just like instantaneous. And I actually didn't even repeat this too many times. If you look at my polymorphine flask, I have 20% left and you drink 10% each time you right click it. So I went to eight parallel worlds basically. And what's very interesting about this is that perks like permanent shield and hungry ghost usually can only stack five times. So the potential damage buff you can get from stacking hungry ghosts a lot is insane and I will show this off a little bit later. Unfortunately, you cannot stack Glass Cannon more than two times, or you can, but it has no effect after stacking it more than twice, which is actually a good thing because it could easily just bring your entire computer to a halt. That said, don't worry, because stacking Hungry Ghosts is more than enough damage than you will ever need. Trust me. Personally, if I was doing a real run with this, I would not duplicate my shield this many times because then you just have an entire screen of shield fuzz to look through and I'm not really a big fan of that. Only a few shields is enough for me. Now, before I show you the damage that this many hungry ghosts can allow you to do, there is actually a related trick with the essences and essence eaters. To show this off, I am going to use the essence of fire because there is only one of these. There are no parallel world essences of fire. So let me just grab that and then we're going to teleport up towards the essence eater. Now I'm just going to carefully destroy the snow to expose the essence eater without damaging it. And then we're going to drink some berserkium and then lay a bomb in there right next to it. And before that bomb explodes, we need to poly ourselves. If done correctly, we will get a Kiaskivi from the Essence Eater dying, but we will keep the Essence of Fire, allowing us to get another Kiaskivi at the other Essence Eater, or one of the Parallel World ones. This is just another useful trick that might help you when you're trying to do the Sun Quest. Okay, now finally, let's see how much damage we can do by stacking 128 Hungry Ghosts. They're hungry for the blood of Colmi. And as you can see, the amulet of Yendor means that I have 34 orbs. So I'm gonna feed these ghosts using the magic guard spell. And then, boom, over a trillion damage in one shot with a spark bolt. <laughs> That's right, it's totally insane. You can one shot 34 orb Colmi with a spark bolt. Lots and lots of damage. This is one of the coolest things that we can currently do in this game. <laughs> and like for absolute power, it's a lot faster than breaking perk reroll machines and it gives you the same or even better of a result. This method right here is the only way to get more than five hungry ghosts. Unless you do really funky things like intentionally crash in order to corrupt your save. Anyway guys, one last thing before we get out of here for today. If you would like to help support the channel by buying some merch, I finally have some once again. We have two truly excellent hoodie designs, including my old Sparks logo, and my new favorite, featuring the Gord Lord design by Spoopy Boy, as well as a passage in Noitaglyphs that says, there can be no such thing as mediocrity of attainment. And then a mug for all your hot beverage needs, featuring a logo design by Kixu, as well as a large mouse mat with my channel banner on it, also designed by Kixu. And finally, two t-shirts, the classic Sparks logo by Black Salamander, as well as the new logo by Kixu, with maybe a little bit of a secret on it. So if you need a hoodie or a shirt or something, there we go. The link is down below in the description and I'll pin a comment as well. Anyway, thank you guys very much for all the support for all these years. I love you guys. Remember, if you ever have any requests, please let me know. Anyway, I hope you have a truly amazing day. Thank you very much for watching and happy noiting.